All right, let's go. Sorry for being shaky. I'm on a bicycle. That's right. Biking. Biking on a simple cruising push bike. I mean, cruiser bike, bicycle, classic style. Around Siem Reap on the riverside here. So I'm on the other side of the river, heading south, east. And there's lots of new, lots of new setups here. Interesting little coffee shop there. Nice uh, seafood restaurant there. You can see how beautiful it is. It's great to walk along here. So I walk here too. And my new hobby is with the biking because instead of riding a, a motorcycle around town, because it's very small and flat, Siem Reap, spending, spending $75 a month on rent. I just bought this bike for fifty dollars, you know, and I, I ride around multiple times a day because it's healthy, it's environmentally friendly, and it's just a much better way to get around. Now I'm going to turn left here, even though that sign says what? No entry, one way. <laughs> nobody cares, especially if you're on the bicycle. It doesn't matter. But literally, nobody knows in Cambodia what those signs mean. You know what it is? Because uh, you can ride a, a, a motorbike under 125cc, up to 125cc, without a driving license, which means nobody takes the driving test, which means nobody learns the rules. 90% of the people ride those bikes and therefore have no idea about international traffic rules and regulations, who has right of way, how the roundabouts work, and so on. New property there. New stuff everywhere. But as much as there are some new things around, many places have also closed down. There's a coffee shop that used to be up here by the old wooden bridge. That's gone. Uh, there was also a restaurant there, a barbecue, which was very popular. That's gone. Sadly, instead, there's more, two more Starbucks, another 7 Eleven, you know? Right, I'm just gonna stop now quickly because I need to do something. Get right back. Right now I'm by the, the main roundabout town, you see, and behind me is something called the Hard Rock. Hard Rock Cafe. You see? Unbelievable. It's a huge building. It was closed over the COVID period, it's back open for about a year. And it's always empty. Nobody ever, ever goes there. Because why? It's expensive. It's a kind of good, but not location. Because it's on the other side of the action. The action happens over on that side of the old markets. But it's, and they have live bands playing in that little thing there with the chairs outside. And they're playing to an empty audience. Nobody. That's, that's how sad it is, unfortunately. There we go, here we go, here we go, here we go again. It's difficult to, to film while riding your bicycle. One hand on the steering wheel, steering bar, and one hand up, up in the air with the cops behind me. Yeah, the cops here are uh, meaning nothing. This is the place that's been. The one problem here with the cops is that they love to stop people on motorbikes for doing a wrong turn, which probably stop me too if they see me doing this but I don't really care that crossing intersections is always very very tricky because again no one gives you right away which I have and they don't stop that sign over there over there that sign is called no parking okay you ask any anybody here what that sign means they say uh, one way I don't know Anyway, I put the phone down. Right, back to the walking. It's around four, 
4 p.m. ish. Not quite. <coughs> Excuse me. So after biking around the city for a bit, which is great exercise instead of using a bloody motorbike and being risked by being stopped by the police because they stop people around pretty much every single corner because they make wrong turns. But they, the unfair thing about that is they don't teach them how to do it, even though it says no left turn over there, for example, right? Uh, you also see a, a man walking uh, across a, a zebra crossing, and that says no parking, and they're parking, right? But I guess motorbikes don't can, as far as they're concerned, because again, they don't know the rules. They don't know the rules. And if it says, there's a man crossing the, the road on the blue sheet sign, that means give the pedestrian right away. Pedestrians have right away all the time anyway, except for on highways, where they're not supposed to be. So, given that fact, it's, it's, it's a big problem here, right? all, all of Southeast Asia, really. I mean, Bali was better for some reason. People tend to do Motorbike drivers tend to respect and pedestrians a lot more than here. I mean, you can, you can, I could, there's every crossing right now here. I can step on that, nobody's front. Nobody's front. I'm trying to prove a point, but nobody stops. See? Well, this is very, very light traffic. But that's the way it is. Uh, here we have a beautiful, beautiful view of the, the river, the same reef. It's not really a river, it's kind of like, it's moving upwards, not downwards, like it's supposed to. It's more like a pond. Yeah, because there's, a, there's a, a little dam up there where they hold back the water and lower or raise it as much as they want to, depending on the time of year and what's going on. But you can see it's a beautiful location. Really, really pretty. I, mean, I haven't actually taken this in so much. Look how beautiful that is. That's a nice view, huh? What makes Siem Reap so engaging? Because it's just beautiful, it's pretty. The city center is nice, it's clean. The only problem are these people. TikTok, tip, TikTok, TikTok truck drivers. They are the worst ever. Vermin, scum. I got attacked by some in Phnom Penh, and even here, recently. They say no to them, they keep following you, they follow you, and then they get, actually one grabbed me by the shoulder. And there's the king's palace, King Siem Reap. Not the main one, but the one up here. The main one is obviously in Phnom Penh. Yeah, so the Tuk Tuk story is another one that I posted that before. They just, uh, if they don't like your answer, mine is no, I'm fine, give me alone. And that's, that happens all the time because I'm walking. If you're, if you're on the bicycle, it doesn't happen, of course, so they're not going to grab you off the bike. But they cannot leave you alone. And if you get annoyed with them, they get angry and show their real self, which is then trying to pick a fight with you. And that's just completely out of order, right? Yeah, so, oh, oh I hate them. Ah, so I'm walking along here again. I'm walking upwards now, northwards, back towards the city center. You can see how beautiful it is here. It's manicured, it's green, it's lush, these trees are ancient, huge, gorgeous. Really, really nice. It's hot, beautiful weather. I mean, usually it rains at night at the moment. The rainy season is coming to an end in a couple of weeks. And that'll be that. Yeah. Oh my God, it's hot. The sun is blazing down four in the afternoon so <laughs> it's a funny one here look herbalife 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 it's huge in cambodia it should be called get a life not herbalife why because herbalife is absolutely nothing for your health it's all chemically processed sugar laden crap their protein is made from Soy bean powder, soybeans crushed into powder, dried them into powder. And soy 
is super high carbohydrate, which is sugar, contains lectins and phytons, which can cause digestive and gut problems, autoimmune diseases. So anybody who's selling Herbalife, tell them to jump on the bike and piss off. Tell them to get a life, right? This comes from a nutritionist, a qualified certified nutritionist for almost 10 years, and I know that for a fact. It's just the way it is. You can look at any ingredient list on, on the Herbalife products, they're all absolute shits, except for tea maybe. But that's another story. That's just selling a brand name. Why buy Herbalife tea when I can get Yorkshire tea or, or Lipton, tea, whatever tea, you know? Dalai Lama tea, I don't care. Anyway, not that I drink tea, I drink coffee. Because uh, a man drinks coffee. Strong black coffee espresso and so on and so forth. All right, enough of that. Now, every single bench here, hello, is sponsored by Herbalife. And many, many, they have many, many, many thousands of women, particularly women who are resellers of that junk, you know, and it is junk, absolute trash. But they promised, and then they, 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 uh, they get people in, you know, they, they entice you to become a, a, a seller underneath there in that pyramid, it's a pyramid scheme. So everybody sells to each other, and then basically you get some products for free and you make a tiny bit of commission off whatever the other people are selling and so on. But nobody makes money, except for the people who own the damn shit. So it's a scam. Anyway, you've got a skateboard park here too. You've got a girl, a girl is getting. Very cool to see. Considering I used to be a skateboarder too. But ish, well, I owned a skateboard company at least called Cream. We made everything from shoes to socks, underwear, jeans, shorts, t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, jackets, caps, you name it. Uh, uh, swimwear for women and men. Oh, oh, kids too. It was fantastic. Until the, until unfortunately the financial crisis came and smacked us down because none of our customers could pay and we had a warehouse full of goods. But that was that. Anyway, that's my little tour of the Riverside is here for you to see. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be making a lot more of these short videos in Siem uh, Reap, in the city centre itself, probably at the market tomorrow. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful background here. A small palm tree. All right, folks, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching Rob's Health Crunch. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel. There is more great content on the way from me about Cambodia, health, fitness, wellness, real healthy food and great lifestyle habits. Don't forget to enable notifications so you'll know when the latest video is posted. Until then, here's some other great content I think you will enjoy.